And it's so good that we can have Tammy to come back home. She's home. She's here and she knows that. It's so good to have her children back there. They're back home. This is home for them to be a part of our service today. Tammy, we're so glad you came to be with us. Thank you. Well, it is good to be back here, and I do thank goodness for inviting me to come back. It's good to you to have Aaron and Grace and William along with me today. Uh, Aaron just got back home last night after working the summer as a camp counselor at Camp Albemarle at the beach at Newport. Um, Aaron has three weeks home, and then he's headed off to study in France for the semester. Uh, Grace continues to live and work in Raleigh since she graduated from NC State in the spring. She takes her GRE tomorrow, so those of you who know what that is, please pray for her. <laughs> yes, <Lord. laughs> yes, yes. Uh, So she can begin uh, applying to PA schools in order to become a physician's assistant uh, and take care of all of her parents' medical needs as they <laughs> state in the spring and he's preparing to enter the PhD program there this fall um, in the area of applied math where he's also going to be serving as a teaching assistant as well as working at First Citizens Bank. Now I share all of these updates and, and praise reports with you because you, Caitlin and First, had a hand in raising Grace and Aaron in the faith. You did. That when we came to Denton, Aaron was preparing to enter the fifth grade and Grace was preparing to enter the eighth grade. And we truly could not have done it without you. And we will forever be grateful for the roles that you all have played and continue to play in their lives. Uh, my husband David sends his greetings as well. After serving Bethany in open hands for nine years, he now pastors Salem United Methodist Church in Albemarle, which is in the Millingport community. And you know this, it has thrilled my soul to run into so many of you all out and about, especially at Walmart. Yes, <laughs> Lord, I still go there. <laughs> you know, you are never far from my thoughts and my prayers for you because on the side of my file cabinet in my office, I have pictured a picture there in the center of United Church as I remember it. On the side of that file cabinet, I also have plastered about two dozen or so uh, sticky notes. Some of them has, have been there for as long as the sun has been out, fading away all the writing. Some of them have prayers written on them. Some of them have scriptures. Some of them have lines from hymns or quotes from books. And I, I look to them for inspiration. I look to them for challenge, for hope, to keep me from losing heart, to keep me from growing lazy. My favorite among them, though, is not a sticky note, but rather it is a blue square that I took from a magazine and that I scotch taped up there on the side of that, that uh, file cabinet. And it simply reads, attempt something big. A hope, an aspiration that finds its way in almost all my prayers to God to be able to attempt something big, something that matters. And that hope, that, that prayer, that aspiration to attempt something big, is indeed based in Scripture, reaching all the way back to Abram, who later became called Abraham, Genesis chapter 12. God's call of Abram, listen. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him. Now I'm not sure if it's an undertone, an overtone, or an echo I hear, but it's in there. Attempt something big. Abram, you have been blessed by God in order to bless the lives of others, to bless the families of the earth. Blessed to be a blessing. And what does the call of Abraham back then have to do with us today? Well, in the New Testament, as Paul is talking about our shared baptisms into Christ, he ties it all together in Galatians 3.29. If you belong to Christ, which we do through our baptisms, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is why children are taught in Sunday school to sing, Father Abraham had many sons and daughters, many sons had Father Abraham taught, I want to Sermon on the Mount. 
build on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all in the house. Now, does the lamp exist for itself? No, its, it's purpose, the reason that it gives light at all, is so that all in the house will be able to see. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Overtone? Undertone? Echo? I don't know, but I hear it in there too. Attempt something big. You have been blessed by God in order to bless the lives of others. You are the light of the world. Jesus said so. So shine. Especially in these days when we have mass shootings once again. You are the light of the world. Shine. Another place that we find an attempt something big scripture is John 14 verse 12. Before Jesus is arrested and led off to be crucified, he says to his disciples, very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these. Because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Overtone? Undertone? Echo? Believe in me and you will do what I do and even greater things because I'm going to the Father and I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. I'm sending you the power. Attempt something big. Because you have the power. The resurrection power at work in you. Ephesians 3.20 is yet another attempt something big scripture. Glory to God who is able to do far beyond all that we could ask or imagine by his power at work within us. We have God's power. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in us. So don't hold back. Attempt something big. Because too much comfort, not enough daring as well, Researchers at the University of California in Berkeley did an experiment to figure that out. Here's what they did. They took an amoeba. You know what an amoeba is. It's a, a single-celled living organism, and they put that amoeba into a perfectly stress-free environment. The temperature was comfy cozy. The, the humidity level was, was just right. There was a constant supply of, of food, of all its favorite foods. Just imagine a never-ending cruise to the Bahamas, basking in the sun, <laughs> suspended in a hammock, having all your favorite foods brought to you on a platter so you don't even have to get up. Well, that amoeba was provided with an environment which required nothing of it. It didn't have to make any adjustments whatsoever. It did not have to lift one single little amoeba finger, if you will. That was one happy amoeba. You might say it had made it died. It died from too much comfort, from too little activity. Like that amoeba, we crave comfort. Just, just look at what we've come up with. We have developed adjustable smart beds for our homes, <laughs> luxury loungers for our theaters. We have even built comfort inns. We crave comfort. But like that little amoeba, we require challenge. We require daring. We require stretching in order to grow and mature. Comfort alone will kill us. And so the longing of every human heart is to attempt something big. Even as we crave comfort, our lives require that we attempt something big. Because we were made for a mission. We were made to count. We were made to make a difference. Larry Walters of Los Angeles, a.k.a. Lawn Chair Larry, felt that same tug on his heart. So one day, Larry blew up 45 weather balloons with helium, something that is hard to come by in Lexington, if you have known it these days. Well, each of those weather balloons inflated to four feet in diameter. He tied them to his uh, aluminum lawn chair, and he strapped himself in with some sandwiches, Miller Lite, and a pellet gun. <laughs>
asked him, why did you do it? And Larry said, a man can't just sit around. <laughs> they 
they think they can handle, asking them to do things that will probably also interrupt the plans of others around them. Sarah, she had to leave everything behind too in order to go with Abram. Noah's family, they had to, to pitch in and then weather that, that cataclysmic flood as well. And that unexpected interrupted call that comes from God, well, then it leads to a, an immediate reaction in the person that's being called, and that reaction is fear. People get scared. God calls us, we get scared, doubting our worthiness, doubting the mission, doubting that we can handle it, doubting that, that God will really empower us to do it. And then thirdly, after the call, after our fear, well, then God gives us a reassurance. Don't be afraid, I'll be with you. You won't be alone. You won't do this alone. You won't be left on your own. So the pattern is this. God calls. We get scared. God reassures. And then fourthly, there is a decision to be made. Decline or accept. Yes, I'll do it, God. Let it be with me according to your word. That's how Mary said yes back to God when he called her to be the mother of God's son. Here I am. Send me is how Isaiah said yes back to God. Or the person being called says, no, no, I won't. To the rich young man, Jesus said, go off and sell all your possessions, give your money to the poor, and then come on and follow me. And that man went away very sad because he had many possessions. No, no, I won't. When God called Jonah to that evil city of Nineveh to go and to preach so that they might repent and be saved, Jonah said, no way. And he hopped on a ship traveling away from Nineveh in the opposite direction of Nineveh. When God calls, you can either say yes or no. You have to answer. <coughs> yes or no. You either trust God, obey God, step out in faith that God is who he says he is and God can do what he says that he can do and he would tempt something big or you don't. Now, of course, we would prefer a guarantee ahead of time of how things would turn out. But we were made to live by faith. We were made to trust God by faith. Faith being the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. So when God calls, and you get scared, and God reassures, and you make your decision, yes or no, know this, know that God wants a yes from you, or else he wouldn't have called you. God wants a yes from you because you were made for a mission. You were made to count. You were made to make a difference. You were made to attempt something big. Because remember, you've been blessed through Abraham, through Christ, to be a blessing to others. Daniel is, is one example. He and his family came to our church a couple of years ago. Daniel just turned 30 years old. and He's an avid swimmer and basketball player. He has hundreds of Special Olympics medals, as well as an insulin pump that he doesn't mind showing off. When he meets people for the first time, he smiles. He gives them a great big hug, and he proudly informs them that he has Down syndrome. On Sunday mornings, we have to tell Daniel when it's time to sit down for worship because he's so busy hugging people as they come in the doors. And whenever there is something that needs to be done, say like serving as a greeter or helping out in the nursery or even taking trash out to the dumpster, I'll say, Daniel, would you guess? Daniel, could you guess? He doesn't think about it. He doesn't hesitate. He doesn't require any whatsoever. Daniel, I say, you don't even know what I'm going to ask you to do. And he just smiles real big and he says, Tammy, I trust you. <laughs> Daniel inspires us with his simple and sincere faith. He blesses us with his smiles and his hugs and his willingness to serve. If only we could be half as eager, half as eager to say yes back to God when he calls to us. Not having to know what all his call is going to entail. Just ready to say yes in faith because we trust him. We trust him to be with us. We trust him to bless us in order to bless others. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. 
No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. As we so often sing, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Or as Hampton Inn's slogan reads, it's a good day for a good day. I like that. 